You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. Back again with Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, Pete. You know what I'm going to ask you? I want you to I'm... ask me why I'm doing great. So, Ricky, why are you doing so great? Well, you know, my uh, mom's in town for the holidays, and uh, there's this one Puerto Rican dish that I maybe have once every four years, and that's mofongo. Have you ever had that? No, I haven't, but I want to clarify, you're not calling your mom the Puerto Rican dish. No, no. Because <laughs> that's weird, man. <laughs> no, Pete. I'm losing I'm you, Ricky. Him. This is this I'm... is this is audio. We gotta keep going. You can't you gotta stay with me. Well, you caught me off guard with that, brother. Okay. <laughs> no, so my mom cooked an awesome Puerto Rican dish and it's called mofongo and actually it's more africa than anything else but it's uh mashed plantains with garlic oh it's so good i'm just happy that i finally got to eat some mofongo for the first time in a couple of years so yeah, i'm a happy am, camper right now i'm not gonna ask you to spell that so we'll, then, uh, we'll i'll send it to you we'll we'll have a, a mofongo show and i guarantee in a couple of weeks we're gonna have some mofongo q a so okay. You know, well, <laughs> we did. We did have some Q and A. A um, lot of lot of layoff talk going on right now. Oh, and yeah. Um, but we're we're we well. I, what we wanted to talk about today, and we still will talk about today, is the uh, expectations for twenty twenty three. Four Corner Resources. We just put out our twenty twenty three hiring guide, which we've been doing for um, for years now, and so it was backed by popular demand, and it's a really difficult year to make a lot of predictions. In fact, I'm I'm not comfortable making any predictions really. It's because of so much uncertainty from our economy here in the US to geopolitics that are that are taking place um it, it, you know and just strife and 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 war and inflation yep. and um a lot of just unrest. So man, it, it's it's least. going to be an interesting year. And you know Here's the thing right now, it, it's, we have a lot of recent layoffs. Yep. You and I were just talking before we started recording about Peloton sort of kicked it off. It, fe it feels like earlier yeah. in the year yeah. with the layoffs. And then it's happened with a lot of the tech com companies recently, Washington post, I believe two oh, days ago right. announced. Yeah. yeah. Significant layoffs there. Um, it, it's, it's rampant. Uh, but at the same time, the Bureau of Labor Statistics data indicates that the job market is still really strong. It, oh, you're you don't like that. Well, why not? I, I just I don't understand how both of those things can go the opposite way. How how is the job market so strong, but we're continuing to experience these layoffs? I, I just I just I just don't understand what what element or what variable in the in that equation is making it go the opposite way shouldn't shouldn't those two points follow each other well y yes and no so the data kind of tells a story if you look at the past 15 years which is what the jobs report um, shows you'll see that we typically have about 5 million openings in the US and mm -hmm. uh, post covid we've averaged over 10 million. So we have okay. a long way to drop. And then we also um, have really low unemployment because um, because there's so many job openings and there have been so many jobs. I get a lot of people exited the workforce is probably the easiest mm -hmm. way to okay. phrase it during COVID. Now, there's a lot of talk about why that's happened, a lot of theories. The one that I think doesn't get mentioned enough is that this coincided with when a lot of baby boomers were already expected to retire. And, you know, I've talked yeah, about that true. on the podcast before, how the great resignation was a, uh, everyone associates that with what was going on post COVID. But in reality, that um, term was coined in 2019. Mm -hmm. And so it was really just unfortunate timing. Well, depending on how you look at it, if you're a job seeker, it's not unfortunate at all. Yeah. Um, if for employers, it's it's been difficult to um, you know to retain staff, to at times hire staff. They've the employers have been forced to increase wages to attract staff, right? And we mm -hmm. we've talked about that as well. So there's all these things happening at once, but the data makes it pretty clear that we have a lot more openings than we have had historically, and fewer job seekers. So there's about six million people on the market for 10 million openings. So 
we have a long way to fall, I guess, is the best way to put it when when com- you know, these companies are announcing big layoffs, but you add them all up and it really doesn't make much of a dent in the uh, number mm-hmm. of openings overall. No, so what I'm hearing is is that the the numbers we're seeing uh, the it, it's I guess what I'm calling out like the large number of layoffs and at the same time large numbers of job growth like, or job opening I guess this is the result of the anomaly of 2020. That's what we're gonna have to call it the anomaly of 2020 because it, it's what what really what what really gave me that indication that I'm like this is a little bit off was Amazon. When Amazon said we're cutting jobs right before when their 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 Black Friday is upon them, that one really surprised me a little bit. And then I started thinking a little bit more. I'm like, wait a minute. So if Amazon is doing this right before the holidays that they work all year to prepare for, they severely underestimated how many people they're going to need. And they severely underestimated what the customers are going to do uh, two years post-COVID. Well, it's, I don't to. think it's – I think that – Amazon story is not dissimilar from the Peloton story where Peloton you know, just in, experienced incredible growth during COVID when everyone mm-hmm. was home, couldn't go to the gym. Therefore, you know, Peloton sales go up, yep. couldn't go to retail stores and uh, either. Therefore, Amazon's sales went up. And so Amazon hired a lot of people to accommodate that. But now this holiday season, people, I think, like getting out and, and going back into the stores. And we've talked about that a little bit. And look, I, I, I don't I don't want to get deep into this because I'm not knowledgeable enough on on these particular businesses and, and what um, yeah. you know, their operations are really about. But it, it makes sense from the from the outside looking in that what happened during COVID, there, there were reactions to that. And then what's taking place post COVID as we get back to a normal mm-hmm. environment and in and, and places like Florida where we live, it's been normal for a, well, for two years now, uh, practically, but yeah. um, well, I think it's selectively been normal. I'll say that because if I look back even a year ago through 2021, we, of course, it was far from normal um, for us. Ha- however, um, as that's happening, then we are, you know, things are, equalizing except the problem is we have a lot fewer people in the workforce i mean that's that's a giant x factor and that that is such a bigger factor than the layoffs we've seen to date now the big caveat there is what are we going to see what are we going to see in january and beyond um as we as as inflation um you know continues to be really high i uh the fed raised interest rates two days ago again yeah, half percent yeah so uh, we're far from out of this and and many people still believe that we're heading towards a recession so i don't think it's while things are good now i don't know that they're going to remain good in the job market you agree with that i agree with that i think i think there's still another shoe to drop um but what i'm what i'm i'm looking forward to it's the competition because if you take a look at all these jobs, these are not low level positions that are being cut. These are highly skilled positions in that world, in the web one, web two, web three world. And now that it's web three is coming up and becoming more relevant, then I think what's going to happen in 2023 is that that divide that we have right now between candidate and, and hiring authority, I think it's going to get thicker, to be honest, because I think the we are going to have some organizations that are still going to hold true to the legacy uh, scheduling system. And you're going to have a lot of people out there that are going to want more of that flexible scheduling system as an example. Right. So I really think what this competition this back and forth was going to do in 2023 is going to force organizations to come up with really creative and out of the box compensation programs to attract top talent that's out there right now. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, in, there's so much going on with it. You, you, on one hand, unemployment's really low. Um, yeah. Yeah. On you know, we have the freelance market that that is continuing to to grow in popularity, and that will continue because it just makes sense, mm-hmm. right? And so, the larger the organization, the the hard, the more they're going to struggle with those changes, probably. Um, but yeah, it's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces and parts of this right now. That that's for sure. And it 
I'm not really comfortable making any prediction on what, what yeah, I, guess, I, mean, I, either. <laughs> I, I just don't have a feel for it, which normally you do, you see trends, but the trends to your point earlier are very contradictory. And I think one of the things that's relevant to mention and being a, a, a staffing professional, this is meaningful to me in a way that would you know, probably not be to people outside of the industry is just because you see a job opening or a company claims to have a job opening. If they're not actively working to fill it, is it really open? You know, does it, does it count? <laughs> and so those jobs do appear in the BLS data, but I, I'm, uh, I'm skeptical yeah. of, of the true number to, to your point. Um, mm. Mm, you know. yeah, it, it's, 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 mm. it's, I just want, I just rather wait till next year and see what happens again. I'm really excited about that competition of talent and what, how's that going to change the landscape of recruiting. I'm really curious about that. Well, so we'll yeah. see, we'll see. And, and now again, I was just reading a, uh, I was just reading an article on the wall street journal the other day about people trying to decide whether this is a good time to quit their job and make that jump. It's never been easier than before. And I think I sent that to you because I'm like, were we not just talking about this a few weeks ago? It, we talk about something, and next thing you know, the Wall Street Journal does it. There's a mic in here. Well, there yeah, is a mic. It's, it's right <laughs> well, in front I mean, of you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some more of my fungo, please? Thank you. All right. <laughs> this, is, this is not the most private of conversations. This is not. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's a, you've got more and more people, I'm sorry, more and more opportunities right now to go out and do your thing. And if you and I would have this freelance conversation in five years, we I, I guarantee we're going to be talking about much bigger numbers by leaps and bounds than what we're talking about right now, which I'm wondering how many more layoffs do we see? How many more layoffs are we going to see going forward? Not just by the business, because this is another article I read, is how how crazy AI is getting. You and you sent oh, me an boy. article about AI. I wrote and, an article about yeah, it. Yeah, you did. I, inter I interviewed the chat GPT mm -hmm. and 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 wrote a blog. Did you not see that? I didn't I, see, did I, I think I saw that one. I think I saw that one because you posted it and you tagged me on it. Oh, that's You're right. Like, yeah, that's yeah right. you did. Yeah, yeah. I, I I interviewed Chat GPT. Have you have you played around with that yet? I'm kind of afraid. I'm afraid I might like it too much, and it's going to take over a lot of my creative processes. Um, it's interesting. I'll just say that it's it's yeah. incredibly impressive and powerful, and I, you isn't know, that it's, the scary it's, part? Well, yeah, it's terrifying if you start extrapolating <laughs> yeah. where all this is heading. Yeah. Um, and in that it appears you know, we I've looked at some AI writing in the past, and it's prior to this, it's always been pretty apparent that it wasn't written by a human. Uh, this is an entirely different level <laughs> from anything Can't I've seen. Tell. Yeah. It's I haven't played around with it, but I have seen some examples and some examples where it's kind of scary is that it does it does take away the human creative process. And I'm afraid that the more we do that, well, like, OK, right now, how many people do you know right now that can write cursive? Not many. Not many. Right. You and I can, but not many. This is an art form that was lost. Right. Even print. Here you go write a book here to save your life in cursive and it's not going to work out. I think the same thing is going to happen with this, that we're going to rely on it so much that at some point we're not going to be equipped to be creative enough to come up with things, come up with solutions, unless it has an algorithm attached to it. And that's all AI is just, you know, a, a, a geometry equation. I mean, yeah, geometry, well, algebra, sorry, algebra yeah, but, equation. You know, I'm sure there were, you know, people who weren't thrilled when the horse and buggy went away either, right? Or, you know, what are you going to take me all the way back then? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I don't know how to ride on a cave wall. I don't, know, I don't know how to tell a story on a cave wall either. But I, I would, I would argue that there's benefits to that, and I think the what what I find scary about it is to not be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Right. And, and so I, I, I do think it makes humans better, right? If we don't have to do the most basic of tasks, it allows us to add layers on top of that and enhance and improve what we were previously doing. Right. I mean, um, we get places a lot faster because of technology. We can mm -hmm. accomplish a lot more and this just can add to that. But what is bothersome for me is, is, is that I can't separate you know, what's real and, and what's not.
right? That that's the that's a scary part. It, and if you know about crypto, which which not not to take this conversation there, but I could really see this being big in the in the parachain crypto market. So if you want to start a contract, some kind of a contract, a smart chain contract, you use that AI program, creates a contract for you, puts it on the blockchain for you. It it's gonna I I I see this being part of a financial transaction, making it that easy in about 10 years. It, it, it's it's because what I see this doing, it's for HR and legal professionals. It really is going to take um, a big chunk out of that. Again, create a process to put together contracts, trainings, as even trainings is it does a really good job with it. So yeah, it does. It's you it's, better it's shape really up good. humans. <laughs> so I have to caveat it. You said crypto, which means I have to say it's not don't don't. Stay away from crypto. It's just Bitcoin. Everything else. Oh, I, yeah, put it aside. Yeah, I, I know, know, but I have to caveat it. Um, <laughs> I and, believe in uh, blockchains, though. I think that has it. Well, that's another show. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah sure. Show. Yes. It's. Uh, <laughs> but don't leave your don't leave your money on exchanges. There. Um, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. So. Yeah. It's it's it, it's it's really wild. I don't know how we started talking about that in particular, other than is, is AI going to take jobs from people? Sure. But they're hopefully mm -hmm. going to have better jobs as a result. Right. And, and that's that's the goal. So when I when I did the, the interview with it, so to speak, it lacked nuance that is necessary. It was sort of like when you see um, programs and applications that uh, profess to take bias out of the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's just match based on need and want and take the individual bias out of it. And I find that bothersome because I don't want to hire someone just based on their, whether yep. they could do the job. I want to hire someone, whether I want to be around them while yeah. we're doing the job, whether I like the way they do the job, the way they present themselves, the way they interact. Now, certainly there's jobs where human interaction isn't necessary, but um, I don't necessarily see that as a good thing. I think you have to get, but I think people are too unique and have too many wants and dreams and desires and goals and objectives and and habits, good or bad, all those things that you just can't find on on a resume. It, you know that you have to have the human element. So bias is necessary in the hiring process, I believe. Well, let's define that. It is necessary, right? If we weren't discriminatory and biased, we wouldn't be doing our job as as talent acquisition professionals now we are biased and discriminatory legally right because it, it, it's it's here's what we do we got several resumes this that qualifies this doesn't we just we're biased on the resumes that have the qualifications that we're looking for yeah let, let me let me just say i mean we we tend to gosh human you know, our the english language has been we've changed the meaning of words so much over the past <laughs> few years yes, right I am biased against people who communicate poorly when I'm hiring a recruiter and I will discriminate against those go. people. Okay. It sounds bad. Uh, it, well, it does sound but bad if you don't understand the definition of the word. Correct. Right. And so this is, and it's funny, and this is so off topic, but I, like you probably have to wonder at times, do I need to be concerned that I know how, how do you, you know, did I know what these words mean? Um, because my audience may not, right? I don't know. I, I don't want to live, I don't want to live my life that way. So yes, I apply bias regularly uh, to to hiring as do as does everyone else, whether they whether it, and now if it's healthy and good and 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 well intended and for the right reasons, of course I should apply That's bias, right. right? I I want someone better than someone worse. I mean, that's just the way it comes. I mean, it's, it's, it's just common sense. And we do need that as human beings. That's why I hope as this AI technology continues to evolve way faster than what we would like, I think what you said makes sense to a point to me. You said about five minutes ago that the more jobs evolve and the more AI takes jobs, that creates more opportunity for other people. I'll I'll pause on that to say that creates more opportunities for the people that embrace it because there's going to be some people who are not going to embrace it. And those are the folks who are going to feel that pinch right now. 
I, I know I just said I just communicated my disdain for it. It doesn't mean I don't embrace it. I like I like innovation. I like technology when it's used properly. It's just too close to Skynet. And if you start, if I start talking to a program that resembles a human, for me, that's kind of scary for a lot bigger reasons than just work. Yeah, right. Because you're right. I, I'm going to want to know. I'm going to want to know um, uh, who I'm talking to in the other line. Well, if it's and, a human being, yeah. And today you already can't. That's yeah, the reality. You when when you look at some of the deep fake videos that are out, um, you cannot you cannot differentiate those in any way. Have you, Pete? Those things are sk- because I see I saw one for Elon Musk, and I'm like, wow, that looks like him. It sounds like him, but it was somebody showing off how they can create those videos, and it is really hard to detect. So it's and and that's now in twenty the end of twenty twenty two. Oh, man. I'd say Wait it's impossible. Starts coming out. <laughs> what? Wait, what's impossible? It's impossible to detect. You're not going to know the difference. Yeah, yeah. No, there's just no I'm possible way. All right. So look, let, we're, we're we're yeah. we've, we're we're, we're we're killing this whole show talking about <laughs> things off topic. What we were going to talk about was 2023, which we did, yeah. but also this uh, uh, article that came out in the Wall Street Journal yesterday that uh, asked uh, why companies have layoffs near Christmas. And so I think that is, there's a lot to that, right? It's a simple headline, but there's so much into it. The, the biggest one being Christmas you know, coincides with the end of the, the, the calendar year, which mm-hmm. is more often than not the end of most companies' fiscal year. So yep. Christmas is an unfortunate time you know, to, for a company to be in financial trouble. Right. I think that's really what, what this is all about. So you're talking to somebody who's done, who've put together a lot of layoff packages, a lot of processes. And let me tell you, it always comes down towards the end of the year for the, for the sole reason of budgeting, 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 budgeting. What mistakes do we do at the beginning of the year with a budget? Because at the at the end of every year of every year, organizations look at what's to budget for two th- for the following year, and uh, we 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 need approval for that. Once we get approval from the corporate executives, we got to stick to that budget. But what happens if we're not on track to get there or not get there? And some of those uh, fiscal years coincides with the end of the calendar year. So around the end of summer, beginning of fall, we start to have a really good picture. What's the end of the year is going to look like? And that's the question, right? Do we do we execute this layoff before or after Christmas? There's no right answer for that. There, there's no good answer, right? That's for it, it, sure. Yeah, because no if good, you, <laughs> when we're talking layoffs, there's not there's never a good a good hey, an, that's answer a good way to stop. <laughs> for the employees. Um, and I'll tell you, when I read this article, when I saw it, and you and I both. I guess get these same messages or alerts uh, for the yeah. journal when they come out. Um, it, over the years, the, when we find out at the end of a week that we have to cut um, an employee, in, a contract employee, at any given time, we have hundreds of, of contract employees mm-hmm. with, with Four Corner. I, I have the same thought every single time. Do, should, we, should we give them the news on Friday and, quote, ruin their weekend yeah. or give it to, you know, it would wait to, to give it to them. So we don't ruin their weekend. Or I always think, do I want to give it to them before the weekend? So they don't go out and spend money that they are that, counting on. That's that the is, problem is no longer coming in yeah. without exception. I have that say, I've had that same thought every time it's come to my attention over the years. And to this day, I still don't know what the right answer is. I don't know what the better. Well, again, like we just said, there is no right answer. I don't know what the better answer is. He here's the better answer because either way, either way, it's a financial risk because for the uh, for the employee who's about to be affected, right? Because if you do it before Christmas, right, then you ruin the Christmas for the families. I, well, you know what I mean. If you do it after Christmas, then they've already spent money that they otherwise wouldn't have spent, right? right? So here's what we do, right? Um, and I've made this suggestion before. Some people have taken it, some have not. If you're going to do it over the holidays, include a ten percent bump. Include a ten percent bump. So when you're putting that plan together to to go to the financial executive to let them know how much this package is going to cost, include a ten percent bump holiday fee or tax. That way, you give the employees a little bit more than normal 
for that holiday quote tax. It's still going to be a tough pill to swallow, but it'll be an easier pill to swallow. Um, that way they know how many months they're going to get for severance and none of that's going to be used for whatever bills they had. Just so here's a holiday tax for you to take it with it. It's still going to be harsh, but. Well, you're, you're assuming that I think in this equation that companies have accrued dollars in anticipation of the layoff. And I don't think that is typically the case because you're, you're having a layoff because you you're having financial difficulty the 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 ten yeah. percent may not be you know probably isn't available or that's only going to make the financial challenges worse. Well, and it, I, I, it's a it's a tough one because it's and you and I kind of end up here a lot because we we try to balance the um, the perspective of of both sides and no employer right this faceless nameless thing it's people. Right. It, mm -hmm. Underneath the brand name, it's it's people. And and yes, you could say, hey, well, and, and this is always the the argument. Well, the, these executives and these companies are still, you know, uh, you know they're, they're still taking their money. Right. And mm -hmm. now a lot of times that doesn't happen. And I can tell you as a as it was a small business owner, a much smaller business owner. At the end of the day, whatever's left over or not is what you end up with. Right. And yeah. And sometimes. That's a negative number, and that can happen. I don't want to go into that right now, but that's a reality of it. And so it's just not as simple as as saying, well, let's just be more generous because we want to be. Of course you want to be. But if you don't have the ability to be, well, how do you how do you handle it? So how do you have the ability to be? So, you know, so this is for all the organizations out there listening. You treat it just how you treat your budget at home. You got to have an emergency budget. You have to. You have to have a line item in your PL that says in case blank happens. Right. Some people don't, some people do. Now, obviously, people say that if you have that line item in your budget in your PL, then shouldn't you dip into that first before you uh, start cutting <laughs> I mean, you know, heads? I mean, makes sense. <laughs> right. Well, this sounds like you know, dipping into the strategic oil reserves, right? <laughs> that, that has been happening over the last year, right? Like, well, how's that helping later? You know? Well, well you know, just 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 buy it, you know, buy an electric car that a battery costs twenty eight thousand. I I read that article too. The twenty eight thousand dollar the guy had to spend for a battery for a Chevy Volt. Well anyway, no, so um it it depends if companies a plan for it. Right. Nobody ever wants to plan for a layoff, but that's an emergency. Like nobody ever plans to get into an accident. You still put on a seatbelt. So it's, so, you know, treat it, treat it like insurance, which is smart. I mean, on paper, that makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know the, I mean, it, 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 you know, how many companies would you, would you estimate have that reserve? You not know, many. have not many. You know, just, just well, yeah. you know, in, a, in your personal life, you say, have what, six months? Six months worth, worth of income is what you should have reserved. How many people actually have that? I know, I know there's statistics about it. I think it's a pretty small number. Yeah, pretty small number. So six, yeah. could, could companies maintain a reserve of 10% of their payroll? That's what you, you would recommend, which is a, which makes sense, but... Well, no, well, not ten percent of the payroll for everybody, right? It, it's you. You come up with fake scenarios, and you're like, okay, if in October we had to lay off two uh, it, two percent of our payroll, which means two two hundred people, right? How much is ten percent? Whatever number we're put because before. When corporate comes out and says you got to ask X amount of percent, you got to go do some homework behind the scenes and trying to figure out what you can move around to avoid affecting people's lives, right? So you obviously start off with empty positions that are your budget for, cut those bad boys out, and you start moving some things around. You work with your OD person to move some things around and save some cash. In the event you can't do that, then you got to put together that number and say, hey, what we're doing here. It's going to call, save us this much. It would have saved us this much, but it's going to save us this much because we're working this little bonus in there. Again, it's just an idea. Some clients have taken it. Some have not. It really depends on how they plan throughout the year. But now, real quick, what does that say for you as the individual? Because we talked about this on the other on the other episode. Always be ready. Always be ready. Well, ABR. ABR. Yeah, I mean, and, and, to the, and there's so many factors that go into this, from public company considerations right. to small businesses and owners who've had to pay taxes on that information. I mean, it's just, it's not that simple. 
Yeah, and, yeah. and and so being ready, yes, in theory, but is anyone really ready? You know, you know, Clark Griswold should have been ready to not receive his bonus, right? But he was <laughs> he wasn't he was he wasn't really ready because he counted on it. Right. I'm gonna I fly to everybody in, down here for the first day. <laughs> I had to throw in the Christmas vacation reference, but um yeah. and, and so the you know what I think about in these scenarios is always how much do you um should the should the company communicate with their employees? You know, give them warning, give mm. you know, talk about it in advance. And I've always erred on the side, for better or worse, of trying to be transparent with those things. Yeah. Why like, hey, if, if times are great, I want everyone to know. If times aren't so great, I want everyone to know that too, um, and and proceed accordingly. Right? I, my hope would be that you know, the, the, as as a, as a business owner, that everyone you know, rallies together and, fig, and 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 figures it out and and works together to solve whatever challenges lie um, ahead. But on the other hand, it's like, hey, I, let me. I'm. I just w- I've always wanted to be transparent yeah. because so much of um, how I've developed my business is what I wanted as an employee. And I wanted, I wanted that open communication. I found it was very hard. I layoffs would happen. You'd hear rumors and then it would actually take place. And all of a sudden people who were there yesterday are gone today. Yeah. And that was just an awful way to live. And I thought, man, when I start my company, I'm going to have, make it so no one ever has to wonder where they stand. Right. They never have to question whether they ha- should be worried, but if, there is a reason to be worried, whether it's because of performance or any other reason. I've always wanted people to know that. Um, now, does that make you cringe as as no not, <laughs> the that, HR guy? You see the smile on my face, Pete, because I talk about this in class all the time. There's a huge difference, Pete, huge difference in saying I want to be transparent and actually being transparent. Right. So let's talk about the transition from theory to application, because I agree with you. Right. You want to be as transparent as possible. Let's talk about what that as possible means, because there are going to be some things that you you it's just it's not going to make any business sense to communicate earlier than when it should be. Right. Your employees should know that, though. You should let your employees know that piece because your employees will respond better to being told, hey, this could happen versus them feeling that they're being treated like a little kid and the wolves being pulled over their eyes. So I agree with you. I would just stand up there and say, look, it, when we're doing great, let's have a conversation of why we're doing great and thank you for helping us get there. But if we're not doing some great, let's have a heart to heart conversation about what that means. And if we don't get to X level, what that could mean for the organization. Now, here's where a lot of CFOs would cringe, right? Because if I communicate that, what people are going to be afraid of, leaders, they're going to be afraid that people are going to leave prematurely. Well, that's, and, that's... And we want to control that. <laughs> well, or do you, or is that part of it, right? If if I mean the smart you know person might say, hey, let's let's let this happen. But again, do you you don't want your best people to leave either? So, but maybe, how do you, you know, curb that? Forget forget that I said no, the smart wait. person because it, it's 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 an angle. It's not necessarily the best angle in that scenario because you don't want your best people to leave. So it's a, if if you can work it to your to your favor, check this out. So if you know, if you're a smart leader and you know that this message is going to rattle some of your best folks, have a conversation with them first and say, look, here's what this organization is going. You are a big piece right. in this puzzle, right? We need you to make this better. You get their buy-in because chances are if they're your best employees, chances are other employees look up to them and they have their ear. So you want them on your side. So you get them on your side. You let them know here's what's going to happen. Um, and you're a big piece of this future of this organization. And if they're on their on on your side and all the employees sees that quote unquote leadership is in the same line, the right people are going to leave. And that's okay. You just have to know who's the right one and who's the wrong. Well, I think every company knows that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Every company knows that, not every employee. No. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a different conversation. That's a whole different combo. Yeah. Okay, so it, you know, layoffs at Christmas. The def- your definitive answer on that is what? When do you want them? When's the best time to do it? 
when's the better time to do it? Man, it, it it's one side says, you know what, rip the bandaid off as quickly as possible. Another side says, man, if that bandy falls on right before, right after Christmas, it's going to suck either way. If you don't got that 10% to, uh, to, um, um, uh, really help that out of your PL, God, I would say before, if anything, right after Thanksgiving, before giving them any kind of an, no, 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 that's it. That's an out. You don't get that out. You don't get the what? right after Thanksgiving. We're talking right before Christmas or after you don't get a, you don't get a six week runway or, uh, you know. Okay. So what does that say to me as a leader that I cannot come up with a program that can help me understand that I will save money to lay people off on any other date other than Christmas? Well, <laughs> it, it's not, it, you know, it, I'll tell you it, as it, being a staffing person, um, mm -hmm. it, it's uncanny how um, frequent layoffs, not layoffs, but cuts happen. And I, and I don't want to call them layoffs because I that, that's a different thing. But contractors get cut um, with frequency, significantly more frequency than they get hired um, at at this time of year. And it's, it's every year. I mean, you ask anyone in staffing, and they will tell you the same story: is mm -hmm. that you know cuts will happen at the end of the year, the, the various reasons. But I, I I I often describe it as just a natural closure. There's an end of the year. We're going to run this through the end of the year. Well, the end of the year comes, and no one wants to do it then, or no one's happy about it, even though you you knew that the the and being in staffing, I know it's coming. Yeah. I know we're going to get a lot of cuts. Rel we're, we're going to get relatively more cuts at this time of year with fewer hires to balance it out unless there's an anomaly. And if I look yeah. back on 17 years, there's been a few anomalies, uh, but for the most part, that's, that's been the way it's gone, uh, gone down. And I, it, it makes sense, but no one ever, no one likes it. No, yeah. you know, the, the people don't like it on paper. It may make sense. So I, so, so can I back up real quick? I kind of want to change my answer. If you've had a great conversation, a great relationship with your employees the entire year, if you get to a situation where you may have to do a layoff that you cannot avoid during Christmas time, if you've kept them up to speed, I don't think they're going to have a hard time with it because it was suspected. Probably, it was well, suspected. I mean, well, that's back to the, communication if yeah if it's been there all along um i i think but it's it still feels bad at this time of the year <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it, it's it's you know this is without this happening there is this is a time of year that really pushes people to the breaking point emotional emotionally it, it, without this whole job thing adding to it so it's it's it's, it's just crappy all along before during and after I don't know. <laughs> That's ever a good time. Well, here, here is, here is, if there's never, here's a silver lining. I won't yeah. call it good news. I'll call it a silver lining. Don't, don't say Thanksgiving. No, you already it, told it, me it, no. It, no, <laughs> no. Well, it's too late. That's past. Um, it, with it, that you know, the the new year is just around the corner, and with that, there there's um, a lot of things pick up. So also from the trend, I've. You know, it's been very obvious to me in staffing over the, the the two decades that I've been in it is come January, things things pick up. And so at the end of the year, one of the reasons hiring gets um, slows down so much is vacations and it's hard to get um, you know, with so many people out of the office, mm -hmm. it's hard to push things through and get the right people to interview and et cetera. But in January, everyone's back in the saddle, ready to go. Boom, things pick up pretty darn quickly. Right. So that's the good news. So if you have been laid off or if you have to do a layoff, just look at that as silver lining and um, you know, try to enjoy the time while you can. And remember that we, for the moment, are in a good position um in the job market for candidates. We we still right. are. And if you're in um a technical role or healthcare or finance, I can tell you. Huge demand, more jobs yeah. than there are qualified people, no question about it. So that's that is more than silver lining. That is actually good news. It is. And it's it's easy for us to be sitting here talking to people right now, people who are listening. They're like, Yeah, easy for you to say, I'm the one who just got laid off. You know, it, it's it's just how you was talking about this being an and 
anomaly. We, 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 we're in it for the past three years, right? We're going to look back at this time from 2020 to 2022 or 2023. This point, these 36 months are going to be um, dissected and talked about in classrooms for years and years to come. So that's I'm it. here to, that's it, right? That's it. You're like, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> you beat, you, we beat it up. We always do enough. You're like, let's not go down another road, Rich. No, no, we're going to end it. But before we do one, one thing in one sentence or just uh -huh. one, you get one sentence, 30 right? seconds or less. You still have to make the prediction for, for, uh, for 2023 on what just describe the hiring market. It's going to be radically different than what you're seeing it today and get ready for some big changes. That's one sentence. Okay. Wow. A lot of detail there. <laughs> <laughs> Things are going to change and it's going to be different there. I said it. Um, oh, man, I can own one successful psychic business. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, yeah. He just, he just predicted every year in the history of, of, the, uh -huh. of the world that is so uh, yeah, I, I, here's mine. Okay. The, I think the freelance market will continue to grow. I think government, our government will try to fight that, but um, it's a losing battle for them because it's better for the employees. It's better for employers. And that train is rolling and picking up steam. I think we will see um, jobs slow down the hiring and in freezes and more layoffs. But I still believe that uh, that there's going to be more jobs in many sectors and there are qualified people. I don't, I don't see that catching up because of the, um, the true great resignation, which is uh, the baby boomer generation retiring. So um, I don't, I don't, I see it bad for the economy, not as terrible for the workforce there. That's my, you and that's I my... have very different definitions of what one sentence means. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> very different definitions because I was sticking to it, right? <laughs> well, then I revised it. I said 30 seconds or less. I think I met that criteria. <laughs> you did. You did. No, okay. So, so can I clarify that mind then? No, I, I want to make I want to make it as awkward as possible. To know. <laughs> yes, of course. And then, and then we will, then we will say goodbye. Yes, and we will say means. goodbye. Well, okay. Yes. The reason I'm saying this going to change is because um, either side they're not budging. Right. You've got some. You've got some candidates that are going to stick to their ideals of you know what organizations need to bow down to my skills that they've never seen before. And the opposite is happening with some other organizations. So I am curious on how that's going to change how we recruit, because I am thoroughly convinced how we recruit, how we're going to recruit from here on forward. It's going to be night and day difference to what we have been doing in the past three years. And I cannot wait to see how that's going to work out. All right. We're going to, we're going to talk about that more on a future episode then. Yes, sir. Cool. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Ricky, thank you. Everyone who's listened this far and gotten to this point, thank you. And uh, a happy new year almost. This is the last show? Merry Christmas almost, huh? Well, maybe. I guess we'll see okay. if, if we if we can. But just in case, we, we're not back uh, with a, publishing another show since uh, until January. We'll, we'll just say it just in case. Um, but you know, please, uh, questions, we love them. Higher calling at fourcornerresources.com. And if you would rate and review, uh, as long as it's five stars, we would love that too. So <laughs> thank you so much. Otherwise, you know, you, you don't, don't, don't bother. There's lots of other things <laughs> you can do with your time. Four, four and a half. No, five, no. five only. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Happy new year. If we don't see you, have a good one.